and welcome back to another episode of Size Eyes, the life of a long-term multitasker. So, I guess if you're listening to the previous one, I did start recording myself on walks now for the podcast, utilizing this lavalier mic. We'll see how it goes. I did listen to the previous one. There's a little bit of feedback for the first minute or minute and a half or so, but afterwards, hopefully you guys stuck through. Um, it, it does dissipate towards the, the rest of the episode. But this one, I did want to continue along the path that I started the last episode of going to my quarterly review. I did adjust the mic position a little bit as well, so let's see how that sounds. So the previous one, I talked about the weekly and monthly reviews. Now to the actual meat of the weekend of the actual quarterly review itself. So for that, it's even obviously a higher level, higher level up from the weekly and monthly where it has the roll-ups from the monthly as well, which going uh, track my daily habits, um, my quarterly, my monthly effectiveness, the takeaways from the monthly. So any gratitudes, any improvements that I try to implement on a monthly basis. Just checking all that out. Really seeing what my, what is it? My quarterly ambition is, that's the word I use for the quarterly. The, the weeklies, weekly priority, did I get that right? Might have to, one sec, I have this pulled up. So I have the yearly story, the quarterly ambition, the monthly theme. the weekly focus and the daily priority. That's how I kind of align those up. But anyway, so during my quarterly review one, I was just checking along the ambition of what I set out at the beginning of the, of the year, of the quarter, what I wanted to accomplish, how many hours, how many projects I finished. I, I believe I ended up finishing seven projects that I set out. I had like 15 or 18 projects that I wanted to do, but you know, finished seven of them. Some of the others were content-based, and so I did achieve you know 70, 80 percent of what I had set out there. You know, so I went through my quarterly, the different wins, aggregating and looking back at my monthly ones, monthly retros as well. So what I described earlier of the story of a story looking through that, as well as the other retros that I did for January and February. Monthly wins, monthly losses, and then aggregating and writing my own quarterly wins, quarterly losses, and then which will eventually roll up to the yearly ones so I can see at a bigger picture. The different improvements from the monthly levels, the gratitude, like I mentioned, the effectiveness of the each each of the months ended up being a uh, six seven six worthy, you know, in order from January to March of the monthly effectiveness that I rated for myself. So, not horrible. I guess it is a D, but within the context of this, that's that shows I'm you know above you know half above fifty but obviously lots of room for improvement. So I think this is definitely a good start. So this quarterly one, I went through, yeah, like I said, the previous weeks, months, quarters, and then I did another retro. So this is in the context of the whole quarter, obviously. So this one is called the error of a story. Again, the story context is, you know, agile scrum framework of kind of something like a project or a task. So this one was called the error of a story, which you have an error of commission and the error of omission. It's a nice little catchy little 
titles there. So those represent, you know, commissions. So these are things that you did wrong, you know, or something of the like that you actually did wrong. Uh, you committed, you know, commission. You committed some fault or whatever. Then error of omission is, you know, you omit something. It's something you, that you didn't do. So you're looking at improvements from both lenses of something that you did that you shouldn't have, looking back retroactively, as well as stuff that, looking back, you should have done. So it provides both lenses there. So I went through that process. Everything from, you know, the actual process itself to my, how I keep track of everything in, in Notion, how I interact with people, my accomplishments and disappointments from, from different projects, my craving for food. You know, for example, I'm like scrolling through these right now on my phone. So this is one of the benefits of just walking and it's like scrolling through my phone recording this. I think that's pretty cool. You know, error of omission. Uh, like I didn't look at my vision board really at all. So I created it at the beginning of the year, but didn't really look at it. So maybe I can improve upon that. Right, not keeping up to with the timeline dates of different projects. So I want to improve that not doing my journaling at night the night before so I'm more prepared going into the next day. Things like that. Things that I didn't do and then on the flip side things that I did do that I should not have looking back. And then after that formal retro I did write, write, write out a couple of questions that I wanted to answer as well that I got from August Bradley and watching his videos when he does his reviews which is how much of what I wanted to accomplish that I actually accomplish. So I write more, I wrote more paragraph type of longer sentences instead of just shorter bullets. You know, went into my different content generation, content documentation, other projects. Oh, there you go. <laughs> And then the other question that I was asking is how am I continuing to become the person I want to become? So for this one, I just approached it as, you know, I am, I am. It's like I am a content documenter. I'm a good intentioned human being. Hopefully you, know, you guys agree. You know, I'm taking ownership at work and at home. You know, so I guess these kind of mirrored some of the affirmations that I had been working towards throughout the quarter and will continue to throughout the year and probably throughout the rest of my life. So that was that process of that question. And then I did a monologue retro. I guess this is still the first day, dang, of Friday. So I did the monologue retro, which is basically, I went out into one of the trails that I had mentioned before, or I guess on the other episode. I just started, I pressed record on my phone, kind of like this, walked around for an hour and a half, just paced back and forth, and just talked out loud, took some notes, recorded it all. Lots of pauses, lots of thinking and just wrote down what I was thinking. So some of the key takeaways, it was just mostly based around my content. So that, that day I had focused on what type of content I was gonna be publishing, what did I wanna focus on, what was the purpose? Am I still, I've gotten feedback throughout the months and weeks that I've been doing this so far and how can I improve incorporating feedback from that I've received from different stakeholders, different listeners, etc., different readers, branding several things, being intentional about everything, how I wanted to structure my content going forward. So it was very, very insightful 
and hopefully this is one of the results of that actually of testing this you know walking outside just chilling getting that ambient noise and hopefully acting like a conversation that maybe you're walking along as well and you're just kind of listening in to all the dog barking the cars going by birds chirping crickets chirping as well is that what crickets do i don't know they make cricket noises so yeah so that was the i call it monologue retro which i actually did for three hours on my yearly one where i just drove around for three hours and just recorded myself but that's, that's neither here nor there then i reviewed the vision board which of course I really hadn't looked at, so it was kind of refreshing to see all the things that had changed, all the things that I'm working towards, etc. But I've I decided to keep it as is from my yearly planning one. No major changes there, some slight tweaks. Then I went through my high level of kind of defining my you know the purpose, mission, values type of thing, kind of what every company should be doing, ideally, and reviewing on some level of, uh, of recurrence there. And so went through those, adjusted them a little bit, slightly tweaked them to, to change them to something that I resonated with, and that every time I saw it, I felt that purpose that, yes, these daily level tasks that I'm doing, they ultimately serve that higher purpose that I've set for myself, that mission, and they f everything that I do follows along the, with the values that I've set for myself. And actually one of the outcomes of that is I changed values, the actual term itself, to instead of just life purpose, mission, and values, it's now life purpose, mission, and unconditional values. And it was something that I was watching August Bradley stuff. He loves unquestionable standards are something that he really focuses in on. Of, It's not values that you strive for, but actually when stuff hits the fan, these are the values that you don't go below. It's the bar, it's the bare minimum. It's the bar that you set for yourself that no matter what happens, you will always follow these values, these standards, these virtues. And so that's what I that's why I changed it. So I was thinking about non-negotiable, unquestionable. I eventually came to unconditional. That whatever the condition of this, my situation, of the external situation, internal situation, I will all follow. I will always follow these values. Then I reviewed the affirmations, which I had. I'm just going it's almost specific affirmations of who I want to become, and not just a general affirmation that people have, but more specific ones that I do my visualization practice on. And so, to mold me into the person that I want to become. So th these can include things like being an effective communicator, being more compassionate towards people, being in peak physical condition, etc. Things like that I, that I can work towards, that it's planting the subconscious seeds for, and my wor thoughts, words, and deeds are an effect of that. And then finally, I moved on to the projects itself. So this is like kind of like the meat of it, where, so this, you know, this process so it's Friday evening, I started to align which projects I wanted to work on and which you know, I've 
backlog of 50, 60 projects maybe, some that I may never get to in life, but I just wrote down in that database. And I pulled in some ones that maybe were held over from Q1, some that were now ready to be implemented. Maybe I combined some, scratched some others, but eventually I came to a list of about 15, 16 projects that I wanted to ideally work on in Q2. So that was, you know, that was Friday. That's kind of where I ended it. And then Saturday, woke up, went through my normal routine again, and then went deep into project planning. So with the with myself aligned on which of the projects I'm going to be working on, I decided I built out the project plans on an action item level basis. How many, how much time it is this spe specific action item, this task going to take for me to accomplish this project. So I built it out for 16 different projects, ranging from different content ones like, like this podcast. You know, I've, I had a task for today that I created a few days ago saying record podcast. Well, I'm doing it. It's active in my task database right now, action item database. So doing that, so I did that for many, so throughout the whole morning, took a few hours to get all through the uh, content ones because it's very repetitive. I wanted to keep track of all the content that I wanted to publish. And so when, you, when I put out, you know, pretty much a blog every day, a vlog every day, you know, repeating different steps 90 times, you know, it adds up, but provides more clarity and distinction and differentiation for how much time it's taking, even though it is basically a habit now. And then, so that took a little bit past lunch actually. And then after, after the project planning for four or five of those projects of content, I went on to do, you know, fill out other projects. You know, some highlights of which were, you know, education, you know, final, you know, finalizing a name for that. Which if you read, if you read my blogs, you can probably guess now. Education, finance, financial type things. Oh, so then after doing the content, I actually did another monologue retro where I went same place, basically same time in the afternoon, beautiful day, and just recorded myself talking. This time instead of content, I focused on three projects, three big scale projects that this quarter what I wanted to focus on, as well as what the actual ultimate visions of those projects are and how what I can do this quarter lines up with that. And so education, financial, and then network expansion in terms of, terms of who I want to be meeting, what types of people, you know, people who are, you know, LeBron's words, built different, you know, in my, in my sense. I want to be people, I want to be meeting people who get it. So that's my goal in terms of that. So making a concerted effort to do that, being intentional about meeting people who meet those requirements and not just have it happen happenstancely. That's not a word. Have it happen intentionally instead of it being an accident. There we go. So then I came back, built out the project plans. So, I mean, the rest of the time really at the yurt, I continued building out the project plans for that for those three main ones, as well as a kind of a workout one. If I get to, I get to this quarter. If not, no big deal. Kind of, you know, like the big workout playlist that I have right now, kind of aggregating all the actual individual exercises from those itself. Kind of taking the best ones, the most intense ones, the least intense ones, creating and forming my own workouts perhaps Maybe recording them in the future, who knows? 
no idea. But I wanted to aggregate all that. Creating more databases. And then, so that took until, you know, the whole process of the, all those projects I did up until that Saturday night as well as even Sunday morning. I actually skipped my morning routine Sunday morning because I was had to be kicked out by 11 or so. So, you know, that was when checkout was. And so I kind of just war roomed it by myself of just completing all those project plans, building out all those action items. So those action items contain, you know, like I said, how long the priority, you know, status of it what date, oh yeah, what date I plan to do it on. So I have actually have two dates of, I actually have three dates, one I actually don't really know, haven't filled in really, but I'll get into that into future videos, future episodes. So yeah, fill out all those action items for the project plans, and then finally as a once all 16 projects were filled out, I looked at looked at them holistically to see if I wanted to change up maybe some of the dates were pretty stacked or the whole project timeline. I looked at it from a timeline view of all the projects. Say, hey, maybe I'm really st stacked up on this this week or so I shifted out shifted around some of the projects to make my balanced um, to make my bandwidth more balanced. It, obviously, this is all personal, so it's not even taken into account all the work, um, you know, workload at, you know, with TU Laundry and Laundro Lab. So, yeah, so that's pretty much the last thing. So that, you know, that project thing, kind of the, oh, and then I guess the actual last thing is after all those projects were completed, allotted, filled out, adjusted, and finalized, I went into the Q2 you know, page and set my you know, official quarterly ambition. And then I trickled back down to the monthly. So when I was doing the review process, I built up from weekly to monthly to quarterly. And then on the planning side, I set the quarterly ambition, the goals, what success looks like from a quarterly perspective. Then I worked on the monthly one, filled in the monthly theme, and then filled out the weekly, weekly focus. So, and then Sunday I left, ended up getting a flat tire, but that's another story for another day. But hopefully that was very, in not very, but maybe, hopefully that was insightful to you to see, to really get inside my mind of how I approach this quarterly review process. And it was so, it, you know, in essence, it wasn't really just quarterly, it was an aggregation of that week, that month, and the quarter, and then finally, you know, on the way back down as well, to see, you know, to set my focus and really gain that clarity of how my next three months are going to unfold, being intentional about everything, how I allot my time and energy. Those are the two most important things, two most important resources, assets that we have as human beings. Let's not get too philosophical here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that episode. Continuation of, uh, of part one there. Of my quarterly review process. And the next episodes I'll probably be going into kind of my, how I approach things in general. Stuff that I've alluded to before, but taking an actual official deep dive into it. So hopefully that set the stage for this quarter and what I'm going to hopefully be achieving 
and hopefully you guys can be following along and listening along and joining me on my journey. But anyways, thank you for listening to another episode of Size Eyes, the life of a long-term multitasker. I'll see you when I see you.